Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the first webinar by Meet Menaka to celebrate you. Today, we have a seasoned speaker who is Dr. Naushet Khan, who is also an associate professor and a consultant doctor in the Department of Emergency. I cannot wait to hear entertaining presentation from Dr. Khan. Over to you, Dr. Khan. I'm so looking forward to hear the myth busting of COVID-19 and vaccination. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, uh, thank you for the kind introduction. I will, uh, it's a very uh, popular topic at this stage. So because we are in the middle of uh, the vaccination, so there are so many, uh, so much of information are floating around. Some of the informations are, we don't know what to do. Uh, the most worrying thing is uh, if you take the black and Asian minority communities and 50% uh, of the people, they have no idea what to do. So they are in the middle, whether they have to take the vaccine or not to take the vaccine. Actually, it's a dangerous situation. So that, that is the main reason we wanted to do this topic in this webinar. Uh, so anyway, I will go uh, first, I'll explain what I'm going to cover in this webinar. First, we have to understand the basics of the vaccines. I know that uh, probably if you take these uh, coronavirus, everybody, most of the people now, they have a PhD or MSc or whatever they have. So I don't need to talk about those things. I'm going to give you a very basic idea about this vaccine. That would be enough to take the decision whether we have to take the vaccine or not. That is my goal. I'm not going to teach all kind of medicine here. Uh, I prepared this presentation for the general public. I did not focus towards the health professionals. I know in this uh, platform, there are um, many uh, health professionals and more senior professionals than me and the more expert, uh, expert professionals. So I'm not going to uh, put this presentation towards them. So actually I'm going to cover the general public. So I will make this presentation as simple as possible. Uh, how important to take this vaccine? That is our next objective. Another one is, uh, how can we come out of this crisis, the COVID crisis? How long will take uh, this lo uh, lockdown situation will continue? So how long will it take uh, to come out of this problem? And the myth busting, that is our key subject in this. So there are so much of uh, false information floating around. Sometimes I really, really surprised how are they creating these stories? So about this vaccination. So I'm going to clear most of the questions. And uh, the next one is, uh, for example, if I give you the mRNA change our DNA in our body, uh, there are more hair growing after taking the vaccine that can bring the infertility, injecting the microchips, and uh, this will kill the old people. And uh, you know, the vaccine will control the uh, population. That's why they introduce these uh, coronavirus and the vaccine. So there are so many questions uh, to be answered. So that's, that's the main reason we want to do this presentation. First, this slide I have dedicated for the anti-vaccine group. There's a group, they are very strong group. If they can answer this question, I'm ready to join in their group. The first thing, the small smallpox, right? So this actually in last century, 20th century, the smallpox killed around 50 million people in the world because of the vaccine, which has been eradicated from the world. So now there's no smallpox. So what is the solution for this? If they can give the answer. Second one is a polio. How many children now there looks like this in this situation? If your child is like that, would you, would you happy with that? So for example, in Sri Lanka, we eradicated the polio because of the vaccine, the rubella, there are so much of complication will come, including the cataract in the eye and the heart problems and the brain problems and everything because of the rubella vaccine that has been sorted. Or oh, basically we have reduced significantly. And uh, you know that tetanus, or we, we call it in Tamil, the eight, eight puveli. And uh, so tetanus, so because of the vaccine we give, we don't get this uh, problem uh, very much. We don't see that nowadays, very, very, very rare. And the rabies, once you get, you can't come out of it because you will be dead. There is no cure for that. How about that? The mums. So if the child had the mums, probably in the adulthood, 
the child will not be able to produce the child. So that kind of problem. So because of that vaccine that has been produced, number of vaccines have been given that saves a lot of life in the world. So if they can give the answer for this, I'm ready to join in this group. I'll come to this. There's a group of people, I call them as a rumorologist. They are very specialized, the creating the rumors, they're expert in that. So still those people talk about, it's just a, another flu. I don't know how they think about this. For example, if you take the UK, 15% population have been affected, infected, which is uh, uh, infected and uh, so far, after 15% infection, we already lost around 110,000 people died in this country, in the UK. 3.9 million people have been affected, infected uh, in this country. So can you imagine, if you want to reach the herd immunity, you have to infect minimum 70 to 80% population. By that time, we might lose around half a million people in this UK. Still, do you think it's just a flu? I think they are kidding. Worldwide, 104 million cases have been recognized. Worldwide, 2.3 million have be, uh, people have died already death. That is a total number so far. And at the moment, when we are talking about at the moment, 100,000 patients in the critical care, they might lose their life. That is the real situation. Still, these people talk about, yeah, this is just another flu. I don't, I don't understand how they create this. So they, we have a two choices. First one, we have to get infected. We have to lose minimum half a million people only in this country. I don't know, a lots of people from the, all over the world that going to be a disaster situation or you have to vaccinate at least 70 to 80% of the population. These are the two choices we have. We have to select one of those. Definitely, I will go for the second choice. Right, so I already mentioned what is our objectives here, so probably that I can skip. The ne next one, this is uh, the photograph I have taken of the smallpox, the 500, and, uh, 500 million people died, the polio, this still we are going through, but anyway, in Sri Lanka, I'm, I'm just, I'm proud of it because we are we're proud of the Sri Lankan uh, government that have done this uh, in the past. Basically, uh, they eradicated the polio from Sri Lanka. The rubella is another problem. So, and the tetanus, I explained that. And uh, also the rabies, there is no medication for this. If you get the rabies, you, you will be dead. And also the mums. So all these medical conditions, there's no cure. So unfortunately, so in this situation, so vaccination is the one of the, uh, that is the one and only choice. If they can bring any, any uh, answer for these questions, I'm ready to join with them. So I already explained so far 15% population infected, uh, uh, that, that will bring around, you know, the total number around the 3.9 million cases. And so far, after 15 million uh, population infected, the, so far we lost 110 million people died. They're dead. So if you want to bring 80% infection, that is the 70 to 80% we have to reach, that is a herd immunity level. In that case, we might lose half a million people in the UK. So we can't give the chance for that. The worldwide 104 million cases, worldwide 2.3 million deaths. At the moment, currently 100,000 patients are in the critical care now. So they might die. We don't know. So we have one choice. We have to select the vaccine. Otherwise, that's going to be a disaster. Still, these rheumologists, they are, actually they believe this is just a flu. Now I'm going to tell, I'm not going to describe so much of the information because we have to understand the vaccine. For Because of that reason, I'm going to give a small information here. We need to know about this, uh, the, the virus point of view. One is there are three important parts. That's all, that's all we need to know. The first one is the inside, there's mRNA, that is a genome. That is an important part. The second one is the protein, spike protein. You, you, you can see that, uh, for, uh, you know, if you see my hands, this is, these are spike proteins. Now this will go and attach with the, the, our human body cells. But that is very specific. It's like a key and lock mechanism. There are hundreds of thousands of coronavirus. Not every coronavirus will come and attack us because the spike proteins are different. The third one is 
the casing, we don't need to know about this much at this point. So we need, we need to know this mRNA will produce, that will have the code to produce the spike protein. That's all we need to know in this vaccination point of view to understand the general public. So if there are any change in this mRNA, the spike protein will be changed. That's why when there any change happen in this mRNA, new variant will come, new strains will come. Simple, that's all we need to know. Next one, when the mRNA, when this virus go inside our body, because of the spike protein that will join in the cells, our body will recognize that as an anti, uh, antigen or the foreign body. Our body will produce the chemical called antibodies. And also our body will remember this virus for the future. We call this as a memory cells. So two different types of uh, protection will happen. First one is antibody will be protected. Antibody will be secreted. The second one is that will produce the memory cells. The memory cells will keep in the memory for the future. If that virus come again, that will kill. That's what happened in the immunity point of view or the vaccine, the, the immunity point of view. So when we come to the uh, vaccination, what happened, we have to understand this part. If you take the mRNA, the inside the virus, there's a code. We don't need to understand too much. If there any change in this code, that will change the spike protein in the virus. The spike protein is a complex stuff. You can see that. That if you change a few letters here, that will change. That is actually the amino acid produ producing letters or code. We need to know, we don't need to know too much. There will be a small change in the spike protein. That doesn't change the full spike protein, one single, single part. So the spike protein change will produce another strain. There are thousands of strains every day coming out, but still all those strains are not important. Maybe few strains, for example, South African one, or maybe you know here and there, there will be some complex, the strains will come. That will be slightly different from the previous one that can make, give up more damage or less damage that's depend on the situation. That's all we need to understand. This is a, the mRNA, the spike protein, mRNA will have the code that will produce the spike protein. If there any change in the mRNA, that will produce this different change in the spike protein that will bring a different strain. That's all we need to know. Now, the problem is if you delay this vaccination more and more, we are giving the chance for these viruses to produce more mutations, more strains, more problems. So we have to do as fast as possible. Otherwise, we will get more strains on and off. That's the problem we have to understand. So we have no time to think and wait here. That's why everyone is rushing and giving these vaccines. What is vaccine? Vaccine basically, before we get the infection, the same, uh, the spike protein, if we send that in our body and that will produce the, the antibodies and the memory cells. So we are introducing some sort of protection before we get the virus. That's the vaccination, simply. So for the simple understanding. So we will keep this protection. When we, when we face this virus, that will kill the virus. That's a protection. We know if you see that, normally we wear the helmet. Why are we wearing? Every day are we getting an accident? No, just for the protection we are wearing. The same situation. The same way, we, are, we have a, the airbag in the car. Why? Are we getting the accident every single day? No, that is kind of vaccination. We have a protection. And why are we having these things? So just for the protection. So basically, so we don't get a problem every single day, but we still be use that. The same, that is a protection. This is the similar situation, the vaccine. Vac so vaccine, a pre-protection um, uh, stuff. Now I'm come to, come to the uh, different type of vaccines. There are at the moment four different vaccines for this uh, coronavirus. The first one is first type. We call this as a genetic vaccines or the mRNA vaccines. That is a, you know, there are two vaccines available, Pfizer vaccine and a Moderna vaccine. The second one is uh, the viral vector vaccine or maybe a Oxford vaccine, we call it and AstraZeneca one. So we use this in the UK, all these three types. Basically there are two categories, 
But anyway, there are uh, three vaccines available. The third one is, it's on the way. We are going to get it soon to, uh, in, the, in the UK. So this one is the protein subunit. Basically, we send the protein. I'm going to explain that in a minute. That is a third type. This is the fourth one, inactivated vaccine. There's a, a name for that. Uh, basically, uh, the well, Neva, the, but actually, the Scotland is producing this one. So there are four different vaccines available, group of vaccines available uh, in the market at this stage. Uh, and already we are using these three, uh, three types of vaccine in the UK. We don't have any live attenu attenuated vaccine so far. The reason I'm mentioning, if anyone have any auto, sorry, uh, uh, immune compromised situation and they, they can take any of these vaccines because so far there's no life attenuated vaccine. This is another rumor. So that can produce the problem for them. No, there's no such a vaccine so far. Now there's a myth going on. These vaccines will produce uh, egg allergy people will get a problem. Actually it's wrong. Those days in 1953, when they produced the flu vaccine, the, what they do, they grow the vaccine or whatever they do in the egg, fertilized egg, and they multiply that. Then after that, they weaken the vaccine or they kill the, uh, sorry, weaken the virus or they kill the virus and they, they sent into the body to produce the immunity. So that is a old technique, the traditional technique. So they grow these uh, viruses in the egg. That's why that egg allergy and all those talk come, but we don't use that egg related things now. Our technology completely changed. So it's a false information. I'm going to clear that here. This will take a long, long time, probably 10, 15 years. We can't wait for this. So the technology have moved forward. So we changed the um, production uh, type. I'm going to tell a few words about this uh, mRNA vaccine. This is one of the, I think in the last century, I would say, what is the best thing we have done? There are few. One of the thing is uh, finding the electron microscope. Second one is probably the computer. There are a few other things in the last century. In this century, probably this vaccine, because this technology changed the all, you know, the vaccine production problems. So this is going to be number one, uh, the achievement probably in, the, uh, you know, in this century. I'm going to, there are two different uh, companies are producing. One is a Pfizer, another one Moderna vaccine. So I'm going to tell a few words about this. What is, what is this vaccine? How does it work? If you take the virus and, uh, one second, I'm going to change the automatic. Okay, if you, if you take this, uh, the virus, I already mentioned that there's a mRNA. Actually, you don't need to send this virus to produce the immunity. What we need, we need just the spike protein. So what they, what they have done in this situation, they have taken the piece of mRNA, which is responsible for producing the spike protein. Then they try to send that mRNA piece inside the body. The problem is this mRNA is very unstable. That will be destroyed very quickly. Because of that reason, they put a small lipid nanoparticles surrounded or maybe a cover or something. That particle contains the polyethylene glycol. Because of this only, there are a number of uh, allergic reactions came. It's true, but not many, but I will explain that in a minute. Normally any vaccine will produce one, one case per 1.3 million vaccines. But in this case, around 100,000, uh, one case per 100,000 case. So the allergic numbers are a little more, but not extreme. The, why they already found the reason for that, that is because of this, right? This because of the chemical. Otherwise there is no harm. So because of this layer, this mRNA piece will be protected they will inject into the body, that mRNA will go inside the body and they produce, that will produce the spike protein. When that spike, spike, spike protein comes, our body will produce the antibodies and the memory cells. So we will be protected. After this process, what will happen? This spike protein will be destroyed, mRNA will be destroyed, nothing will be there in the body. 
only we will have the antibodies and the memory cells. Whatever we are sending inside will be destroyed automatically after some time. So this antibody and memory cells will keep it, uh, will be in the body. Whenever we get the virus in the future, the coronavirus, that will go and destroy that coronavirus. That's how it's working. Now there's another myth floating around. This is haram. You know, Muslim community people will talk about that. Why is that? There's a lipid particle. This is a, we are taking from this, uh, uh, you know, the peak, right? That is completely wrong. That is a different chemical. Doesn't come from that. That is a complete nano particles. It's, we, I already checked that all the contents. That is not haram or anything like that. That is a stupid thinking. There's another myth is floating around. This mRNA will go and change our DNA. You can ask this question to one of the, maybe a 10th grade student. They are studying science very well, much better than us we used to, you know? So if you ask them, from the DNA will produce the mRNA. Never, mRNA will not produce the DNA. Never, ever, ever, ever. So this will not change our DNA, that is completely wrong idea. They don't know what are they talking about. So that is completely different. Now that in this mRNA, this is the mRNA vaccine. So I already answered that question. There's a huge problem in this, in this vaccine because the mRNA is very unstable. They are covered by the one of the, you know, the lipid molecules. We have to keep this vaccine in a very ultra cold situation, you know, very cold situation. If you see that uh, Pfizer vaccine, we had to keep, uh, keep it around uh, minus 70. It's, it's very difficult. So they have uh, produced some form of uh, uh, dry ice containers. We call it as a uh, Arctic uh, containers. That is a key problem here. Otherwise, that vaccine will be destroyed. That will not work. This is a major problem. Still, we are facing about it. Maybe the technology will find the solution maybe in the future. Now, there are other mRNA vaccine being produced some other countries not been approved so far. We have to understand. One of the thing is Urivac. This is from the Germany. There's another DNA vaccine is there that is not been approved yet, but it's in the process. So that is the first technology, mRNA vaccine. They are sending the mRNA in the body. mRNA will produce the, the spike protein. Spike protein will introduce the, you know, the, produce these, uh, our body will produce antibody and memory cells. Next one. Now, second type. Oxford vaccine, still we are using in our country. I would say this is another big success. This is very tricky. Tricky means very, very intelligent stuff here. I'm going to explain this one. You take the coronavirus, take the mRNA piece, which is responsible for our spike protein. Take that spike protein, uh, sorry, take that mRNA piece and join into the another virus. How is that? They take this virus from the chimpanzee and they modify that virus, genetically modify that virus. They use that virus as a carrier, as a carrier. They put this piece of mRNA, which is responsible for spike protein into that virus and we send it to our body. Now, this is a tricky part. Because it's a chimpanzee adenovirus, it's a common flu virus, simple virus, not a harmful virus. The chimpanzee adenovirus will not bring any flu in our body. So when they put this mRNA into that chimpanzee adenovirus, when we inject that into our body, that will not Korea. produce any disease at all. But at the same time, that will carry this mRNA piece into our body. Very clever. Then that mRNA piece will produce the spike protein, the spike protein will introduce uh, in our body to produce uh, antibody and, and uh, you know, the memory cells, immunization done. This is a tricky one. So basically what we are sending by using another virus, modified virus, we are sending this mRNA piece into that rather than sending just the mRNA. That is a technology different, the AstraZeneca. Beautiful. I like this technology. Probably this is a step forward and also this very cheap. This is the cheapest vaccine in the world at this stage. If you compare with the mRNA vaccine, that is around 15 pounds. This will cost around two, three pounds. Well, this will be more suitable for more population in the world. So it's very successful from the 
AstraZeneca, they are worldwide company. So the Oxford uh, worldwide company, they send this uh, uh, copyright to India because India producing 60% of the drugs in the world before the COVID-19. They are the master pro production of in this, uh, any, any medications. So they gave the copyrights, the uh, biotech company and another company, they produce these vaccines in India. They supply these vaccines to Sri Lanka, Nepal, India, you know, all these countries, they are giving the thing in a different name, the COVID shield. There's no standard compromise, all the same vaccine, same product, nothing different. There's a myth going on, the Sri Lanka, they are using a you know, second class stuff and not, not completely wrong. You can't do that. BMW is BMW, produced from Germany, produced from uh, India, something like that. Simple to understand. These uh, uh, rheumology, whoever the specialist, they have to understand this concept. So then in Sri Lanka also, thankfully, they gave a 500,000 vaccine from India and they already started the program. Now, not only this, the same technology being used by Russians, there's another company that is a name for that. And also, and another vaccine have been be, being developed. The beauty of this vaccine is single dose is enough. It's going to be introduced very soon in the UK. So, the, you know, the, the, there's a Johnson & Johnson company. They are producing a slight different, not double dose. Single dose is enough, 66% effective. That is a name for that. There's another vaccine from China. They are producing same technology in a different name. So the temp, this is a kind of, a, this technology becoming more popular now. Now I'll go for the third type. I'll summarize up to now. First one is that we are sending the mRNA to produce the spike protein that will produce the uh, antibodies and the memory cells. The second type, we are using another virus and put this mRNA inside and sending to the body. Now, third one, why we have to send this mRNA and the virus and all these we're too complicated. One clever fellow found that we will produce this spike protein outside the body. They manufacture the spike protein outside. Then they send just the protein inside, that spike protein inside. Wow, that's very clever. This is going to be one of the major technology change. So this is the third type of vaccine, Novavax. This will be introduced soon in the UK, right? So that is a, this is, this is a, I, I really like it because there's no virus at all. Nothing is going inside. Just the spike protein is going inside. That spike protein will introduce our body into our body. Our body will produce the antibodies and also the memory cells after that spike protein destroyed, nothing, job done. That is the third type. For example, Novavax. Fourth type, take this coronavirus, kill the coronavirus, so, but, leave that mRNA will be inside. We send that, oh, we don't need the mRNA. Basically, spike protein will be there. They, we killed, um, uh, uh, coronavirus will be sent inside the body. There are four companies producing, including one of the company uh, in Scotland producing this vaccine. Valneva, already UK ordered around 100 million doses. And that is a fourth type, kill vaccine. That, so kill basically the um, virus that will go inside, produce the, you know, uh, antibodies and the memory cells. Now, I'll summarize that. Four different types of vaccines are there. The first one is we are sending the mRNA, which is responsible to produce the spike protein that will go inside the body, produce the spike protein and produce the uh, immunity. Second type, we are using another virus and sending, uh, uh, you know, put that mRNA inside and sending inside the body and producing the immunity. The third type, just the spike protein itself we produce from outside and send to the body. The fourth one, we kill the coronavirus sent inside the body to produce the uh, immunity. These are the four different types. That's all we need to know. Now, this is going to be a challenge for the rheumologists, you know, to overcome this problem. Whenever they talk, stop there. This is, this is what the public have to understand. Then they can't fool around. Now I want to make this, there's a, already I mentioned that there's no weakened or life attenuated vaccines available so far in the world for coronavirus. So if anybody 
using any steroid or immunocompromised medications or anything. They can use all these vaccines because there is no such a life attenuated vaccines in the market. So there is another rumor. You can go for that. Okay. Now there's another talk going on because of this rumorologist producing that. Oh, there's a shortcut. That's how they produce these vaccines very fast. Because I'm a very suspicious person. Very suspicious. I don't believe in anything very quickly in this world. I read and study and everything, do all kinds of stuff. Then only I will give the permission for someone to put the vaccine into my body. I research, if you ask my colleagues from the hospital, I was very against for this vaccine in the beginning, the first, before, before they introduced. Then after introducing, I was watching and everything, and then only I approved. So this is another concept is floating around. You can see that there's no quality compromised in this vaccine. First, what they do, they trial, pre-trial, they do that in the animal. After that, they'll introduce this vaccine to few volunteers, up to 100. Then they select more volunteers, probably several hundred people. That is a phase two. Then third phase, they, they give this vaccine for thousands of people all over the world, different part of the world. That is a third. After this third trial, only that will come to the next stage. Otherwise, that will be rejected. So the third, third phase, for the example, uh, Pfizer vaccine, I believe around 40,000 people included in the trial that the Madonna vaccine around 30,000 people included in the trial. So they did the proper trial, they analyzed everything. After that, they went to the phase four. The phase four, they have to submit the document to the regulatory bodies, the national regulatory bodies and the regional regulatory bodies. At the same time, that will go to the WHO, they will check it. Then the WHO will authorize, then that will go to the, uh, the manufacturing uh, stage. Then many, they will manufacture, and they'll start to distribute. When they distribute continuously, they will monitor. Then if there are any problem, they will overcome that problem. So that is the normal vaccination distribution pathway. Never distribute any vaccine until we go through this process. Whatever the vaccine we are using now, all of them went through this process. There's no shortcut at all. So I want to, cl I want to clear that one. At the moment, there are 256 vaccines being produced all over the world, right? But most of them are failed. WHO agreed or give, gave the permission initially for six vaccines, Pfizer vaccines, Moderna, and Oxford, AstraZeneca, and other one from the Russia, and a Sinopharm, one of the vaccine from Beijing, you know, the China, another one, um, Sinovac from the China. Then now, They've introduced another three vaccines, Johnson & Johnson, that will be introduced very soon in the UK, Novavax, and the other one is from the Scotland, Valneva. So only two vaccines so far, peer reviewed, that means properly reviewed and they published the docu you know, uh, publications in the journal article, like a Lancet or the uh, New England Gen um, Journal of Medicine. Only two vaccines. One is a uh, Pfizer vaccine, and other one is a, uh, I think a Madonna as Moderna as well. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I, if I'm not sure, I will tell you I'm not sure. The second one is a uh, Oxford vaccine. These are the two vaccines have been peer reviewed. Now, this one, as I said before, we have only two choices. First one is we have to get the infection 80% population, probably only in the UK, maybe 500 people will die, half a million people will die. Nobody wants that. We can't accept that. So the second one is we have to vaccinate, prevent that, and we get the herd immunity, and then we move from there. I would go for the uh, second choice. I believe everybody will go for the second, second choice. Now you are going to ask how many people we have to vaccinate in the UK? Probably you don't think about that. The UK population is because sometimes we have to appreciate if somebody do something good. At the same time, if somebody do bad, we have to criticize, we have to let them understand. That is a best nature. We don't want to block everything. So then the, at the moment, UK government struggling a lot. They are doing so many good things as well. We have to appreciate that. The UK population, 65 million. If you want to reach the herd immunity, 
and uh, I believe uh, you have you understand the herd immunity. Uh, average minimum seventy percent population needs to be vaccinated. The different disease a different number. At least seventy to eighty percent population will be vaccinated, or the seventy percent people maybe get infected or vaccination plus infected or whatever. What is that population? Roughly, if you calculate that, that is forty-five million people. Forty-five million. Already, fifteen percent of our population, which is around roughly around ten million people, already infected. Now you are going to ask the patient, ah, so can we take that people out from this equation? No, all of them, whoever infected also needs to be vaccinated because the immunity in their body after infection maximum will be 90 to 150 days. After that, that will disappear. So we have to vaccinate those people as well. So total, we have to uh, vaccinate 45 million people in the UK. This is according to the WHO. So if we vaccinate 15 million people per month, that is a target at the moment UK is having, right? This will take minimum three months to give one dose. At the same time, already we started the second dose as well. So total, we need 90 million doses to vaccinate our population. The great thing is the UK so far, they purchased, they already ordered the purchase or already ordered the purchase for 400 million doses. So we are safe. That's a, we have to appreciate that. How long will it take? Yes, of course, there's minimum three months if you do that properly. At the same time, we are going to fight with this virus with the different strains and here and there and all these things. Maybe, th maybe four months, five months, we don't know. The point is, once we reach a reasonable number, our, our infectivity will come down slowly. Then uh, death rate will come down and the hospitalization will come down. Then we will slowly, slowly, we can take everything out and we can come to semi-normal situation. That's what we are expecting in this. So far, we vaccinated in the UK 11 million people. Our target is 15 million per month. What we have to achieve, we have to bring this R note infectivity level for the simple term I'm telling below one. We have to reduce this hospital administration and the death rate. So these are the limitation factors at this point. So we are moving towards a target. Government target is by mid February, we have to reach 15 million. This is the last night figure, the most latest figure I've taken. Now, so far, more than 18 years old people, if you take that, in England, we have reached 21% of the people have been vaccinated so far. This is the most latest figure. And also, if you take the 80, more than 80 years old people, we are already covered roughly around up to 90%, or you no, know, 88.1%. If you take more than 75, uh, old, 75 years old people, we are already covered around 82%. So vulnerable people almost we are close to cover everybody. So we are ready to come out slowly, slowly, but we should not rush. That's the most important thing. Now, are we doing the best? Are we in the one of the best in the world? Nah, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that, okay? Israel, they already vaccinated for 100 people. They vaccinated 60 people. So they are in the number one, Israel. Because the reason I put this slide, Israel have done this because of that reason, their infectivity or maybe a hospital, um, uh, hospital admission has come, come down 60%. So vaccine is working, obviously. UAE, 30, you know, we can see the number. We are in the fourth in the world. We are not, in the, not the best. But anyway, we have to appreciate we are doing our best. I already mentioned 400 million doses have been ordered, different vaccines. If you see that AstraZeneca vaccines, 100 million. Well, well, Neva, this is from the Scotland, another 100 million and another different, different vaccines have been ordered. If you see that uh, Pfizer, only 40 million because Pfizer, I'm not very fan of that because, because of this, you have to maintain in the ultra cold climate and we can't uh, send this to very uh, developing country. We have to think about all world, not only our country. We have to think uh, with a broad minded and also very expensive because of that reason. I prefer Ox uh, Oxford AstraZeneca because it's very less expensive, probably two or three pounds. For Sri Lanka, that cost around 600 rupees, something like that, or maybe, I don't know, right? So we have to cover all world. We have to think about it in the broad-minded. Now, 
But another important question. All oh, right, okay, I'm vaccinated now. Can I remove the mask? Can I go around whatever I, the way I want? No, really. According to the WHO, according to the WHO, we don't have enough information whether this vaccine will, how much this vaccine will reduce the spreading capability to another person. We don't have enough information. Until then, we have to follow the mask and social distancing and washing hands and all the things, whatever we are following. Otherwise, our purpose of this vaccine is reduce the spreading. And if you come out of this quickly, that will be a disaster. So we have to continue this according to the WHO. Now I'm closing, um, I'm coming the last, near to the last part, but anyway, I have to mention this. Uh, you know, when we explain the vaccination or whatever it is to the general public, we have to use the simple term. Otherwise, some people will not understand that. We are health professional. We have a duty to explain the things to the public. So still, the mask is very important. But some people, they, they are the mask in a wrong way. Some people, they don't want to wear the mask. Some people, they, when you say the mask, they are misunderstand. They put it somewhere in the wrong place. You know, so we have to be very, that is not their wrong, that is their capacity. So we have to explain nice way, right? This is, you would have seen this uh, many places, the Facebook and everywhere. If you don't wear the mask, if you stand in front of the carrier, you that spreading or maybe catching the virus is very high, chance is very high. If you wear the mask in front of the carrier, that catching will be high, not very high that will be reduced a bit. But if the carrier wear the mask, that will be reduced significantly, but still there's a risk. If both of you wear the mask, maintain the distance, your chance is very, very low. It's a very simple message, but some people, they don't understand. That's, that's, you can't change them. You have to treat them very nicely. They don't, they don't understand the thing. So we have to explain in a different way. We have to follow our different technique. Maybe probably, I don't know, Dr. Khan's technique or whatever you call it. You have to tell them, <laughs> when you stand, walk around nude without any clothes, if somebody pee in front of you, that will wet you yourself. You don't want that. What you can do, you can wear something with you, wear the pan, then at least that will protect a little bit. At the same time, if you wear the cloth or pan and the person who is peeing also wear the cloth, that will be almost protected. Now they will understand. You know what? Good, got, got the point. So we have to explain these kind of things in a very simple way to the people. The same situation, the vaccine. There are so many people, they're confused. They don't know what to do. The most worrying thing, the black and Asian, our minority people, they don't know what to do. The 50% current figure is a 50% undesired. That's going to be a disaster. Can you imagine if all, pop, you know, most of the people in this country vaccinated, only these communities, including myself, I'm in that community. If you don't vaccinate properly, this, vac this virus will search for a shelter that will come and settle in within our community. That will kill more people. Already we are blaming the government, oh, we are, we are dying, so many people are dying in the black community and that and this and all. Then at least understand, take the vaccine. Otherwise, how are we going to protect this? So we have to understand this. Now some people, when you explain these things, they completely misunderstood. They pick something and put it on the face. You can't blame them. But I appreciate this lady. At least she's covering, okay? But they select a different color and different design. So we have to explain very nicely. This man, he has to follow the rules and regulation. I appreciate that. But he brought something from the bedroom. It's OK. And the, see that they are very keen to wear the mask. They pick something and they are wearing the mask. So please explain to the people in the simple language. Otherwise, they don't understand. Ladies, you are so beautiful. Still, you are wearing the mask. No problem but you have to wear it properly, okay? How about the variants? If you give more period, more, you know, if you don't use this vaccine, you, that will, more variants will come. That's going to be more problem. So we have to move this vaccination fast and vaccinate as fast as possible to the pub public. Now, some people ask, 
Huh, why do we have to vaccine? Whether this vaccine will work or not. You know what? Our life, we have everything is with, with some sort of trust, some sort of belief. Then only we move forward, right? We are getting married, okay? So with some sort of trust. That's how it's, our life is working. The, you know, one or two is failing. That does not mean we don't believe the marriage life. No, it's not like that. So we believe and move forward. So anyway, we saw already we are gathering, we are getting the information, vaccine is working. The hospital admission is, uh, admission is coming down. In the UK, not a single person so far after vaccination being admitted in the ITU or any severe uh, illness. There's a mis another misconception. The vaccination will not stop catching the virus. The virus will go into the body. But that will not produce the illness or that will not make them very sick. That's the understanding. And also, virus, some of the virus can spread to another person. But the virus load will be reduced. The spreading capacity will be reduced. But we have to wait until we clear from the WHO, uh, collect the data. So don't think like it's like a bulletproof virus will not come to our body after taking the vaccine. No, that will come. That will not bring a serious illness. That's understanding. So more you delay, we are into big trouble. Cost, I already explained that. The Moderna vaccine is 25 pounds for a patient. Oh, person, very expensive. Ox Oxford, uh, AstraZeneca is the cheapest at this stage. Now, uh, there are some post-vaccination, this is, a, I have to mention this because if somebody don't want to take the vaccine, you have to think about this. If you are getting this a virus, if you get a very serious illness because of the virus, there are some uh, post uh, complications are there. Some of, that does not mean everybody will get that, but at the same time, this has been published in the Center for Disease Control. I'm not telling this. Not, not of this information I'm producing myself from somewhere and the reliable resources. So autonomic nervous, nervous system disturbance, I don't want to talk in detail. Palpitation, that means a fast heart rate and bradycardia slowing the heart rate and the, the patient on and off, they get the collapse and dizziness and erectile dysfunction. So oh, by the way, they're the same company, Pfizer company producing the Viagra, then they will be in a successful business. But anyway, the stroke, and also the blood clot in the lungs and the calf muscles and heart attack, heart failure, kidney failure, poor or memory concentrate, you know, brain fog or maybe a concentration problem, hair loss, lung function abnormal. There are so many complications will come. Not everybody will get, but anybody get a serious illness, there's a possibility they will get it. So if they don't get the vaccine, they might get this as well if they are affected by this virus as seriously. Now, rheumologist, I'm going to the last slide, I think last part, this one, I think I believe, I'm sorry. Uh, this is one of the best rumor I recently seen. It's in the Facebook and social media at the moment. This particular doctor, I don't know whether there's a, such a doctor, that's the first thing. This doctor has published one and uh, this COVID vaccine will kill all the people. I was reading this. You know, without the fire, there will not be any smoke. Most of the time, these people read something, they misunderstand the concept, okay? I will translate this because it's in Tamil. Uh, this vaccine, uh, the Sweden and the Germany and all these countries, they stop giving. They don't want to give because this is causing so many unexpected death. More, so they don't want to give more than 65 years old people. And also there, she's telling that uh, the same situation for mRNA vaccines like a Pfizer and Madonna. And also the Indian company has signed the contract under the table, something like that or whatever. And they are producing some vaccines in India. And India, so many people, 13 people dead. Most of them are young people because of these vaccines. So she put up some sort of rumor. Then I was thinking, how did this rumor come? How did they create this? There's a reason for that. They read something. Then I went to this magazine, if you see that. And uh, in this particular magazine, what they mentioned, the Sw Switzerland and, uh, you know, basically they, they are not going to give this vaccine 
and the elderly people because they are waiting for more data collection because there's no enough data collection over 65 years old. Only they have 8%, uh, uh, you know, basically the trial sample have been checked. That's why they are waiting for that. That's all they said. And also they said, and, uh, but we are giving the green light for Pfizer vaccine and bio, you know, other Moderna vaccine. They said that they did not say anything else. This, this particular doctor, whoever, if there is such a doctor, they created the story in a different way. The, she's floating around. India, that newspaper, I went and checked that newspaper. Basically what they have said, there are 13 deaths, but that is not relevant, uh, related to this vaccine at all. They've completely rejected. There are so many newspapers. This particular doctor or whoever it is, they created the story other way around. This is how the people create the rumors, this completely wrong information floating around. There's another one, the reason it is one of the WhatsApp message. One of the lady uh, nursing staff uh, had a COVID, um, asymptomatic COVID in November. And after that, she had a, a vaccine, Pfizer vaccine, second dose in 1st of January. And uh, in a, after the vaccine and uh, uh, 16th of January, she is very sick. And she is thinking, ah, I supposed to have so much of antibody in my body. So why I'm getting this problem? Oh, vaccine is not working. That is floating around all over the place. You know, you have to understand this vaccine, not 100% uh, success, you know, efficacy. You have to understand that, first of all. Even if it is 75% efficacy, if you take, you vaccinate four people, three people will be protected. One person will not be protected. You have to understand the simple logic. If it is 95% successful, if you take 20 people vaccinated, one person will not be protected. You have to understand the logic. I'm, I'm explaining to the general public. I don't want to go over the efficacy and all these things. I, I, I already mentioned that this presentation for the general public. So don't expect this vaccine will protect every single person in the world. No, there's a failure rate will be there. That does not mean vaccine is not working. We have to understand this basic very carefully. Another one, probably you would have seen this. One of the professor has said that uh, this uh, virus, uh, basically he said that uh, man-made or whatever. Poor professor, he's a nice man, okay? I went and checked the website and that website, basically he apologized in their university website itself. I never said this, I have no clue what are they talking about, that is the situation. And also I check the, the uh, other informations as well. And there's no such a thing at all. Please go and check it. So these people create these kind of stories. Every single day, the rheumologist, they are very specialized people. So don't believe immediately. References now, what I used for this presentation, I don't want to use in the, from the Facebook and that uh, here and there. I use the WHO document, Center for Disease Control document, uh, whatever the Sir Patrick Valencia, you know, our government chief scientific advisor for UK, whatever he said, Dr. Anthony Fauci, I, re I have a great respect for him. He has been as a chief scientific advisor from 1974. He is an advisor for seven president in the United States, whatever he said. And also the Lancet, one of the uh, leading uh, journal and the New England uh, Journal of Medicine. So I did not get this information from anywhere, anywhere else or maybe, you know, you, from the Facebook and that person's information, no. All clarified and verified information, I already put that. Now, hand, I will hand over to uh, Menek. Thank you, Dr. Khan. As usual, it was a very engaging presentation. Thank you so much. Before I go into the question, just to clarify, Today is the first webinar we are doing. We will be doing this monthly webinar. However, our talk shows will go as usual every Saturday at 3 p.m. UK time. Today, we are going to be speaking about perhaps a controversial topic in some cultures and societies, which is, is living together still a taboo? I have friends from different ethnicities, different cultures, and what I have heard from them and learned from them is they are even surprised that from, why are we even speaking about it? Because it is a norm in their culture. However, anyone come from the Asian subcontinent and some other parts of the world perhaps will understand why we should be speaking about this 
subject yet. Thank you so much for listening, and we will go into the question time. I have uh, had a lot of, lot of questions coming already, so I am going to be um, asking those questions first and then go for the questions what is being asked. Thank you very much, Noshad. Very nice presentation. Clearly, you talked for the public and part of your public education and really commendable and I'm really impressed by your talk. A lot of things even I learned today about the vaccines and the research you have done. And I'll allow the other people to ask questions. I don't want to ask any questions because um, it may be more medical, but I want the general people to ask something. But sure. it's excellent presentation, well done. Of course, yeah, he is a you know excellent speaker, decent speaker by now. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us once again and listening to us. After this, I'm going to come off the Facebook, and people can um, stay back and network with Dr. Khan us and anyone else if you want to. For people who are joining from Facebook, thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you at three o'clock London time to talk about is living together till the table. Until then. Stay safe, be happy, and keep smiling.